I would like to welcome first up to the virtual stage and live from the UK to formally open our proceedings, James Dudridge, MP, Minister for Africa for the UK government. The minister previously served as Parliamentary Undersecretary of State at the Department of Exiting the European Union from 27th of July 2019 to January 2020 and Parliamentary Undersecretary of State at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office from 2014 to 2016. He was a government whip from May, to May 2010 until two September 2012, so he is at the heart of the current government. But more importantly for me, for today's forum, it's important to emphasize the fact that this is a minister who knows and has a passion for Africa. He had a business career in the private sector, including 10 years in the banking industry in Africa and London. He has a vast experience of African affairs, a keen interest in financial matters and industry, and was a founder of YouGov. Minister, uh, you are most welcome, and thank you so much for attending this Hogan Novels conference. Uh, thank you, uh, Andrew. Uh, it is fantastic uh, to uh, be welcomed with live from the UK. Uh, I feel somewhat of a rock star here, uh, having passed the baton from sunny <laughs> Portugal uh, to uh, sunny South End. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, to Hogan Lovells for, for hosting uh, us. As the UK uh, Minister for Africa, you would expect me to enthuse about the continent and the UK's relationship with African countries. But um, as Andrew said, for me, this isn't just part of the job description. It's, it's deeply uh, personal. Uh, Africa is wedded through the last 25 years of my professional history. I met my wife in Africa. I worked there when I was a banker. It has always been a major focus of my political uh, and commercial life. Um, so Africa, the continent, means a lot to me, and I want to see African countries uh, succeed. The economic potential of the continent was evident during my time as a, a banker with Barclays in Swaziland, uh, now Eswatini, uh, Botswana, uh, and the Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, I saw how businesses and enterprises transform African lives and these experiences still inform my approach. I believe the continent has the resources, the drive, the creativity and the know-how to flourish. The Covid of course has hit African economies particularly hard. Um, trade and investment have suffered and, and African borrowers are finding it harder to access finance on good terms. No country uh, will be able to set aside the challenges of COVID really uh, until everyone has. And that's one of the many reasons it's important that we help um, get everybody out of uh, the COVID situation. It's why the UK is leading the international efforts to develop a vaccine. And it's why we're supporting the international response to the economic fallout. Sustainable investment, improved access to financial markets and inclusive global trading systems are vitally important for countries to bounce back uh, from COVID. Now, the time I spent in Africa left me in no doubt that this is the place where the next major economic transformation will happen. In January, as Andrew's mentioned, the UK government and Boris Johnson hosted the UK Africa Investment Summit. We laid the foundations for partnerships between the UK and African nations based on trade, investment, shared values, and mutual interest. And part of those shared values are the values we have on the legal system, the accounting system, and through the City of London. We also announced billions of pounds of new commercial deals. These partnerships um, are between private and public sector that work for the mutual benefit of the UK and African countries and are exactly what we need. They're partnerships that can support the African economies recover unlock its growth and deliver the transformational change the continent truly needs. The UK government's taking numerous steps to increase trade and investment with African countries. We're working with them to put trade, place, trade agreements in place that will unlock growth. We're stepping up our aid for trade at support, supporting our African trade, and particularly we're championing the uh, African continental free trade uh, agreement in area, which is important to reduce tariffs uh, across borders and send a clear signal that Africa is open for regional business and international business. We've launched the Africa Investors Group, which brings together uh, over 20 of the largest UK investors in Africa from a range of sectors. 
with the largest donor to the International Finance Corporation, which is loaning more than 850 million US in new working capital to small and medium-sized enterprises in developing countries. We continue to bolster the African financial markets, including investing in the Africa Local Currency Bond Fund. We're helping African countries bridge the digital information divide. For example, we're investing up to uh, 45 million pounds in Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa to join up the digital economies in those regions. At a time when other commercial investors are retreating from markets in Africa, CDC, the UK's development finance institution, has been working hard to support their portfolio of 690 country companies uh, in Africa. They've also uh, have uh, increased liquidity into the market and stepped up work to promote investments that can support access to healthcare and basic services during COVID. For example, they've struck a US 100 million uh, deal with Sokja to extend finance to banks in Africa to boost trade. But this is only part of the story of Africa's journey to a more prosperous future. The private sector also has a crucial role to play in terms of creating jobs and taxes to fund better services. A better educated, healthier workforce will create entrepreneurs. It will create innovative businesses. And crucially, it will create uh, customers for tomorrow. This is the cycle that can sustain African growth into the future. We need to be able to recognize that the steps we're taking now will help rebuild our economies. But they'll also have a profound impact on the future sustainability, the resilience and well-being of our societies longer term. It's important that we keep this sustainability at the heart of the recovery. That's why we're working with African partners to stimulate clean growth, build resilience to climate change and manage the continent's natural resources to take sustainably. As a politician and formal, for, former banker, events like this uh, that bring together public and private sector are particularly important to me. All of us have a role to play in Africa's brighter future. And this forum is a great opportunity to connect and share ideas. Now I'm conscious you've got a charged program ahead today. I sadly have to uh, head to uh, the Foreign Office and into the House of Commons uh, later. Believe you me, I would much prefer to be joining uh, you here at this conference. However, while my diary doesn't permit me to stay for the whole event, uh, the excellent Emma Wade Smith, who you'll all know well, the UK's Trade uh, Commissioner for Africa, will be representing uh, Her Majesty's Government and indeed speaking on the panel later on in the day. And I look forward uh, to following up with her on the outcomes and all the ideas that you raise. And I, for one, are going to tune into Andrew's podcast, which I will listen to on my next run. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Minister. Um, that, that's that's a really helpful um, start, and I'm particularly um, happy to hear <coughs> that the the great the great start, which I think the UK Africa Investment Summit made, and the great positive the the, the positivity around the uh, the whole event, I think was was great, and that we'll see some granular um, gran granular actions. And uh, Emma is actually on my panel later on, so we'll be able to test her and. Uh, I'll report back on her performance, no doubt.